So, listeners, there's something you should know. I am Lou's father's, brother's, cousin's, nephew's, former roommate. Which means absolutely nothing. It's time to take an inside look at those that are taking their lives, their businesses, and their passions to the next level. Get ready to thrive loud with Lou Diamond. Hey everyone, I'm John Coffey, one of the Thrive Loud interns. Today, we wanted to highlight someone from a previous episode that I think is super sick. Jude Charles is a storyteller, a story-driven filmmaker that sheds light on the work of purpose-driven entrepreneurs and gets their messages out there, loudly. Jude's own story is one of amazing creativity, wise mentors, and staunch perseverance. The dude was writing books about his future and dreams when he was eight. Anyone doing that has got to have wisdom to give. I'm not sure I even knew how to write my name when I was eight. Come to think of it, I'm not sure I even know how to write my name now. Huh. Anyways, <laughs> let's listen in and say, Hey Jude, to Mr. Charles. So, you know, I have, as long as I can remember, I have always been fascinated by storytelling. I'm not sure why, but as an eight-year-old, I wasn't the kid playing basketball outside or playing football with friends. I wasn't the kid... Uh, playing video games. Instead, as an eight-year-old, I was writing stories. So I was writing books, 100-page books. And it was about what I thought my future life would look like. So it was books like, uh, I had a book called The Police Life of Jude Charles. <laughs> and because growing up, I actually wanted to be a police, o- police officer. Um, I had another book called The Baseball Life of Jude Charles. I had just read or heard about the Jackie Robinson story. And I wanted to portray that in some way, how I would live that life. Um, And so in all, I wrote 11 books. But as I got older and I became a teenager, I realized, wait, these stories that I'm writing, I can actually turn into films and videos. And so in high school, I got into video production um, and started playing around with cameras and learning how to actually make films, learning how to make videos. Um, and so in my junior year of high school, I had a TV production teacher who was, uh, saw something in me. And so she taught me everything she knew about video production. And by the end of that year, she said, Jude, you know, you're really, really great at this. I think you should start a business. Like you can actually use the camera to help make films for other people. And I didn't know anything about what it meant to be an entrepreneur, what it meant to start a business. Um, But she didn't give me an opportunity to say no. (laughs) By the following day, she bought my first set of business cards. Oh, wow. And so at the age of 17, junior in high school, I started a video production company. Now, these videos that you were producing, at least at that time, were they for businesses, personal use? What, what, how are you helping to make this your line of work on the early stages? So when I first started, I was doing small gigs. So I was doing like birthday parties, uh, retirement parties, $500 weddings. So it wasn't, um, at that point, I hadn't been working for entrepreneurs. That opportunity came up five years later when I met a model who was turning into an entrepreneur. She was starting a new business called Kaor Cosmetics. Um, and the entrepreneur's name is Keisha. And she wanted to be able to document the entire process of actually building this company. And at the time, she wanted to do vlog video series. Um, and, I, and this was about 2010. So this was around the same time that Gary Vaynerchuk were making video vlog series kind of popular with uh, Wine Library that he was doing right. at the time. But I wasn't interested in just doing quick little small videos and putting them up online. I actually wanted to tell her story. So I pitched her a different idea and I said, hey, what if we could actually make a documentary out of this? What if instead of just random clips that we put up, what if we actually allow people to get into your mind as you're making decisions about 
the different kind of cosmetics that you're creating. Because she was doing something very unique. She was creating colored lipsticks, which in that time, 2010, it wasn't it wasn't popular. It wasn't out. So she was creating like blue mm. lipstick, green lipstick. Um, so not the normal colors that we're used to. And I said, you know, let's actually allow people to not just see what you're doing, right? We see the meetings that you're having. We see how you're um, talking to the to the to the uh, person that's mixing the cosmetics for you, but let's actually allow them to really understand the vision behind this brand. And so uh, she agreed, and we started to do that. We filmed for the first year. And the documentary series is called uh, "Building the Brand," and it is her entire journey. So that's ultimately how I ended up starting to do this work where I'm helping entrepreneurs tell their story. And so at that time, I didn't realize the power of what I was doing. And I was actually in a very, very hard space at that time because the first five years of business for me were brutal. It was extremely, extremely hard because I struggled to make money in the very beginning. And so this transition into helping entrepreneurs tell their story was some, something actually brand new that I didn't even know if it would work. Um, and I remember there was a day that I sat on the edge of my bed. I was sitting in my room, sitting on the edge of my bed. And I remember thinking to myself, all right, look, I've given this five years and I've got to make a decision. Like either I'm going to continue to this, continue doing this kind of work, continue doing video production, or I'm just going to say, look, I, I gave it all I had for five years. It was a nice run. I had some fun and I'll just, you know, I'll say at least I tried. And I remember sitting on the edge of the bed. It had been a bit, at least 30 minutes of me just staring off in space thinking about this. And I get a phone call. And I look over at my phone, and it's actually Keisha calling me. And I'm like, you know, I don't know if I'm in the right headspace to be talking to a client right now. Like, I'm thinking about just giving this all up. And, you know, it's something I just decided to pick up the phone, and I pick up the phone, and immediately you can hear the excitement in Keisha's voice. And I'm just like, in my head, I'm like, this is just not the right time for this. And she says, Jude, Jude, like, you won't believe it. Like, I just... I just got off the phone with my accountant and you won't believe what he said to me. And I'm like, well, what did he say to you, Keisha? <laughs> and she said, you know, it's been 12 months since we started this, since I started the company, but you won't believe I've already made a million dollars. I've crossed over the seven figure mark. And I remember pulling the phone away from my ear, just thinking like this, this isn't real right now. I had been in business for five years, struggling to make $30,000 a year. Meanwhile, Keisha had only been in business for a year, 12 months, and she's made a million dollars. So were you at that point, like knowing that you were helping her, that maybe that was a little bit of jealousy? Or were you saying, how the heck can I get on this brigade as well? That's actually exactly what happened. For the very first time, I realized what was possible in entrepreneurship. Um, leading up to this point, I had never asked anyone for help. I had never seeked out any other mentors or even just looked up advice on to how to run a business properly. But realizing that Keisha had made a million dollars in 12 months, I'm like, wait, what if I could make a million dollars? What would it take to make a million dollars? And because I finally saw what was possible, that changed the conversation that I was having in that moment with myself. Um, and that's actually what helped me start to look into online courses, start to look into workshops um, that talk about business specifically. So not just even creating stories or filmmaking, but talked about business. And, um, and so finally, for the first time in five years, I finally felt like I was no longer drowning. I, was, I saw what was possible I had been with Keisha for a year at that point. Um, we ultimately worked together for three years, but I had been with her for a year at that point and realized, wait, I have the blueprint right here. Like I had been seeing everything that she was doing for marketing. I had seen everything that she was doing and how she was making her decisions very intentionally about her brand. And so that project, working with Keisha, helped me really change the trajectory of my business, not just in running and operating a business, but also in understanding how do I help more entrepreneurs do this kind of work. You've been listening to Thrive Loud with your host, Lou Diamond. Check us out on the web at thriveloud.com and follow us on Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook at Thrive Loud. 
And check us out on the Good Pods app at Thrive Loud, where you can follow, listen, and connect directly to Lou and all of the Thrive Loud episodes. Thanks for listening.